Hello, thank you, Paul. Sorry for the technical difficulties, you know, non-mainstream OS. So, um, I shortened the talk to document-centric Android, and I chose that because it's a nice buzzword, and I was hoping I was selected to talk to you as a speaker, so that worked out well. Next thing, I had to, to come up with actual topic because it's just a buzzword, so. Uh, Google used that to, uh, for, for the feature that was introduced in Lollipop, um, where uh, what previously was the recently used app screen, you can now have multiple entries per app. So that was the, the buzzword for that. But then I thought, you know, that's too little content to talk about for 30 minutes, so uh, now you get two topics for the price of one. We'll talk about uh, a little bit about the storage access framework, and then about this new, uh, you know, document-centric Android. Um, and we will start with a storage access framework. I will not talk about the whole thing because uh, the, what I like to call server-side part is um, really involved and not too interesting for many of you, um, unless you're, you know, cloud storage uh, provider that writes an app on Android. It's not terribly exciting. The uh, client part on the other side is, is um, useful for uh, most of us developers. Um, so storage access framework, what is it? It's basically a framework um, that unifies opening, app, uh, opening documents or creating documents. Um, you have these document providers that provide access to the documents wherever those may be on your local storage in the cloud or you make them up as you go, that's possible too. Um, the important thing for users is there's a standard user interface to to access those documents, and we will see how that will look like. Uh, that looks like in a minute. First, uh, we'll see how how you get about, go about now or pre um, the storage access framework was introduced in KitKat. So pre KitKat, how things looked like. Um, oh, awesome! I had this nice animations, then I exported it to PDF, and now you see all at once. So uh, let's go over them one by oh. The resolution is also not too good, so I guess that's good. Um, we see an example of three apps that have uh, custom file pickers, and as you can see, they, they look a bit different, but they all do the same thing. So there's lots of code duplication, which is you know, always, always hers, as, at least for me as a developer. Everyone is doing the same thing, and it looks different. That's kind of bad for users, um, but that's the, the way you kind of had to do it uh, until now. Um, uh, you also had the chance to use the, the get content uh, intent that would uh, display a dialog like this, um, and you could choose the, the app which supported to deliver you content. Um, as you can see, there's, there's no uh, file manager if we disregard the, the one that's installed on the Jenny Motion emulator, uh, because Android didn't, didn't ship with a file manager. And, uh, as it turns out, people still like to select files on their local storage, so uh, that's a pip pretty popular segment in, in the App Store of file managers, even though it's kind of a boring tool. Um, so, uh, action get content was kind of pimped with the introduction, uh, introduction of the storage access framework. Now it looks like this. Again, the resolution is not too great, but uh, we see on, on the left what it looked like previously. Now you don't get a dialogue, you get a whole uh, activity. And um, apps that support the storage access framework, for example, Google Drive, they show up up here as a document provider. And the other apps which only support the old way, of course you can still use them, uh, they show up uh, down here. <clears throat> and if you click down here, they, they will show their, their own custom UI. Um, if you click on Drive, uh, I hope we will see that right now. Oh, no, okay. So we, we see all at once. Um, uh, so if you click on Drive, you will see something like that, which is a, a file listing, much like a file manager would show, only that these can be in the cloud, like my world domination plans uh, on Google Drive. Okay, so um, that's the way you, you, you were doing it. Um, you just use the, the action, you, know, you specify a type that you want to get, in this case images, and then you create a chooser, and like I said, in the old version you saw the dialog, in the new version you, you see the new UI. Um, so there, there wasn't change marks, that still works. Um, a, a small introduction I like very much is that you can now um, select multiple uh, documents uh, so just by specifying this little extra, um, 
apps that is supported, that is uh, the, the storage access framework, um, you can select multiple items. It gets a bit more involved when you actually get the results back because previously you had to, to read the content URI to your content from the uh, data field of the intent. Um, they didn't change that. There's still just room for one URI, but uh, with, I believe, Jellybean, they introduced the, the clip data object, uh, and there you can put multiple URIs in there, and it also works out with permissions, which is important. Um, so as a user, you just have to check is something in clip data, then use that. If not, do the old way. Um, so uh, that was getting content. If you wanted to save content, there were uh, a lot more options. So one is you could use the download manager. Um, so uh, just write the, the file to the download folder and then say to the download manager, I have some content here. The upside of that is it shows up in the download app that is shipped with Android. The downside is uh, if, if you're, I don't know, an image creation software, uh, the user wouldn't expect the content to end up in the download app. Um, you could also use the share intent, which is uh, supported by most cloud storage providers. So um, by, by saying share, you can actually save the content to the cloud. Um, then there's a way uh, of writing just to hard-coded directories. You maybe, if you open a file manager, you see that every app creates its own folder uh, there in the, the top level SD card. Uh, so that's always fun. Uh, there are a couple of more ways. Um, oh, damn. Okay, so here was a picture of a file manager um, where you could select a directory. So it, it looks like the regular file manager only had the button on the, um, on the bottom. Uh, we can say select directory, and then you get a, a file URI to that directory back, and basically go about just as with a hard coded directory, just with a selected one. Um, sadly, there's no standard intent to do that, so I, I copied that from my uh, little open source project. Uh, you might end up with, with a, a listing like that with uh, tons of intents, and yet then you have to check, oh, is this file manager installed? Then do that. If another one is installed, do that. Um, so it wasn't pretty. Um, in uh, the, the other option you, do, uh, you can do is um, pr provide the all-in-one custom solution. That is, you know, your own uh, directory picker, or uh, you support some... some uh, last century uh, cloud storage solution like FTP. Um, but the, the downside is you have to integrate the, the SDKs of all the, the cloud storages you want to, um, you want to support uh, in your app. So that's not really a great solution, I guess. Um, so uh, the, the new way is you have an intent for that, um, the, the create document action, uh, and it will uh, display the, the UI we already know from the search access framework. So uh, here could actually be uh, the, the listing of the directory. Here is random files. Uh, below you can specify a, a file name and then hit the save button. Um, then you will get a URI you can use to, to write the content there and the system will transparently you know, move it to the document provider and it gets uploaded to the cloud, written to your local storage or you know, just forgotten. Um, that's how you do it. Um, much like we saw before, uh, you have the action, you have a type, uh, you can specify a title, that's the suggestion for the file name, the user can still change it. In this case, we have Corgi JPEG, um, the rest, that stuff you just have to do. Um, then, uh, different topic, again, no nice animations. Um, uh, you can also pick a directory. So we saw some apps implement a custom uh, directory picker. Um, the new system also has you covered there. So you can request um, to open a document tree, which is basically a fancy term for what previously was a directory or is a directory locally. Um, and then you can access uh, all subdirectories or all files in there. So that's pretty neat. Um, it gets a, a bit involved uh, when you get the result back because you get a tree URI, you can do nothing with that except for requesting a document URI and with that you can create a, a document URI and with that you can then access the, um, the directory or create new uh, files. 
stuff like that. Okay, so um, here's what it looks like, sadly. Um, I installed some apps that already uh, implement the, the new um, document provider. Um, and if you use the, the open document tree intent, uh, only the, the built-in internal storage supports that, not even Google Drive, which was, I think, the first app that supported the, the document provider interface. Um, so that's a bit sad. If any of you are you know, working for a cloud storage provider, please fix that, because it's a nice feature and I want to use it. Um, Okay, so much about the storage access framework. Uh, like I said, that's more of the client side, so um, the writing the document provider obviously is not that easy, otherwise we had a, a ton of apps that already supported it, but right now it's, it's very few. Um, Dropbox doesn't support it, which is really a shame because I use them. Microsoft OneDrive does support it, except for you know, the open document tree. So um, if someone from Do Dropbox is here, Microsoft supports it. Um, right, okay, so the overview screen. It was introduced uh, with Lollipop. Um, I don't know. How many of you um, are pre-Lollipop on their personal device? Okay, that's not too many. Though. Okay, we're at Android Developer Conference. I'd say about 10% or maybe 15. That's good. Uh, so you already should know how it looks like. Um, I think, like I said, no animation, so I think uh, we will see how it looked like before. Right. Okay, so uh, on Android 4 devices, when you click the, the soft button on the lower right, you will see this screen, and it's basically the, the list of the recently used apps. Um, one app, one entry here, you can see Chrome, and in this screen you can't see it, but there are currently two or three uh, tabs open, but... Um, it gets just one entry. In uh, Lollipop, uh, Chrome, I think, was also the first app to support that. Uh, you get, uh, or you have the option to have one entry per, per tab in Chrome here. Uh, that's um, two entries. And yeah, they also uh, added another functionality I will talk about later, which makes this screenshot very busy because there are lots of colors and you don't really know where one thing ends and the next starts. But the animation when you play with it is rather nice and uh, I like it a lot. Okay, um, again, no animations, so I have to tell you what, what I grayed out here. Um, the, the old way to, um, to open content, say you're uh, an email app and you display a message and there's a link in there, the user clicks on that, um, uh, previously, you specified the clear, or Google asked you to specify the, the clear when task reset flag, um, which meant here's a logical break. I'm starting a new activity, and this activity will launch in my uh, activity task, but it doesn't really belong to me. When the user um, switches to another app, then goes back to the home screen and clicks on the launcher icon to, to start my email app again, please don't display whatever activity I launched, say, uh, an image view because the, the link was to an image. Uh, please don't show that, but uh, display the, the mail again. Um, so Google thought, uh, okay, so we have this logic break. Uh, we just use that in Lollipop and rename it to um, flag activity new document, uh, which basically says, okay, we are, we are launching something that doesn't belong to our app. Previously, it was the same activity task. Now, it's a separate one, and you get an entry in the overview screen. So if, again, you launch um, an image viewer, you will get a new entry in the overview screen, and when you switch back to the email app uh, without any magic, you're, you're back in the email, and if you decide you want to go back to the picture, again, you can do that. You don't have to destroy the image viewer activity, and um, it's gone forever. Um, okay, so... Um, if you specify or if you add the new document flag, um, not in all cases uh, an actual new activity is launched. It's uh, similar to new task. If there's already an existing activity, this one will be reused or brought to the front. Um, if you really absolutely uh, want to uh, create a new task each time, you have to uh, add a new flag uh, called 
multiple, it's not a new flag, it was an existing one. You have to uh, add another flag, the, the multiple task one. So um, in the demo apps, you, you can end up with a lot of uh, similar uh, activities soon. So um, if you don't absolutely have to, I discourage that. So if you can, you should reuse uh, tasks if they're already there. Um, but the, the proper way to do that, so you, ideally you don't want to specify, uh, uh, to, to add a flag each time you want to launch an activity. If you say, um, I want to always launch a new document task, uh, you can add an attribute to your uh, activity element in the manifest, uh, either specifying always, which uh, always opens a new document task, much like if you specify the new document and um, multiple task. Um, into existing uh, is much like just specifying new documents, so you, you get it once, and if it's already there, it's brought to the front. And uh, never just ignores the flag, so even if you specify a new document, uh, you will get the default launch behavior uh, that is in your task, unless you have other flags. Um, and none is the default, which does whatever flags you give the launching intent. Okay. Um, and I mentioned this before, uh, they, they added also functionality to change the look and feel. So um, the default look of, of your app in the recent screen is just whatever was on the screen. And then this is not the, the actual toolbar that was on the screen, it's a layer on top. Uh, it displays the app icon and then the title of the activity um, <coughs> with, uh, I think the, the gray is the default, but I'm not sure on that. So. Don't quote me. Um, you can manually specify that, so change the icon, change the title uh, and the color of the bar. Um, so if you have really multiple documents, you should probably specify the document title here. Uh, Chrome, for example, uh, just uses the title of the website here. Um, if you really only want one entry uh, here, like you know, traditional recent app screen, uh, you might want to change that and use your app name here instead of whatever was the activity title. So if you're an account selector and your activity title is accounts, um, the user probably won't be too happy if accounts shows up here in the recent screen because I imagine lots of apps that support multiple accounts have an account screen. Okay, um, that's how you do it in code. It's pretty easy. Just create a task description object with all the information. Um, and uh, call this uh, method on the activity. Um, some of the things are optional, I forgot uh, which. Um, I think the icon and the color, I'm not sure about the title, so if you can just change the, um, the icon. But uh, you can find that out. The documentation is usually pretty good. Um, read it. Um, you can also manage your, your document tasks, so if you have multiple, um, Chrome, for example, has the option if you open uh, an incognito window uh, a tab or multiple of them, you will get an ongoing notification. Um, and if you click that, all incognito tabs are closed. That's kind of the modern boss key. Um, get rid of the, the incognito tabs. Um, so uh, activity has a method uh, finish and remove task, which you know finishes and removes the task. Uh, also from the uh, overview screen, if you close uh, an activity the, the normal way by just calling finish, uh, there will stay an entry in the overview screen because the user might want to go back to it. Um, so you have to consider that. Um, don't just remove, remove everything. Maybe the user wants to go back. Even though the activity is finished, uh, the system remembers the intent to create it. Uh, so if the user clicks back on it, uh, the activity will be relaunched. Um, then there's also uh, the get app tasks method in the activity manager, uh, where you can get a list of all the um, tasks. Then you can finish and remove tasks on arbitrary tasks. To remove it, you can call move to front, which you know moves it to the front. Uh, you can start an activity on a, a task that is not your own, which is also kind of nice. Um, and like I said, the system remembers the, the base intent that was used to create the task, so that's uh, here in get task info base intent. That's probably also what you would use if you were to implement a 
functionality like Chrome has, so close all in incognito activities. You would iterate over all of them, just find the one that are incognito ones and call a finish and remove task on them. Um, yeah, and if you like, you could even implement an app internal task switcher with a move to front thing, but I hope you won't do that. Um, another feature that I haven't seen any app using besides Chrome is make task launch behind. So if you long press on a link in Chrome and select open a new tab, you will see a short animation, uh, a new activity will show on the bottom and then immediately disappear, so your current uh, web page will stay active, but if you go to the overview screen, you will see multiple entries here and they are grouped. So the, the spacing here is the, the normal one, and then those are grouped together. Um, there's sadly no way around, so you can't, uh, at least I haven't found a way, to launch something in the background and then have a, a regular grouping. They, they will just say like that. Um, but the, nevertheless, you can switch between them like uh, any of the other entries in the overview screen. Uh, you do that very easily. You just um, call uh, activity options make task launch behind to get uh, an object and then you uh, call the two bundle method and use the special start activity uh, method with the bundle. That's, that's basically responsible, so the implementation detail is a bit meh. Um, they, they have a flag for the, the animation, you know, show it and then immediately disappear. And apparently they also use that animation flag for the actual functionality of the grouping. That's a bit sad. It hurts me as a developer, but okay. Um, there's another feature. Um, in Lollipop, by default, the, the entries in the overview screen are persisted. So you probably noticed that if, if you're not in KitKat, um, that when you reboot your device and go to the overview screen, you have lots of entries there. At least that's, I never clear them manually, so lots of entries there. Um, you can actually control that a little bit. So the default is that uh, the root is persisted, that is, you know, the base intent um, is uh, remembered, and if you actually select one of them, the, the um, app is relaunched, or the activity. Um, you can set the, flag again, that's um, an attribute on the activity element in the manifest. Uh, if you specify persist never, um, the act or the entries in the overview screen will be forgotten after the reboot. Um, then there's also the persist across reboots, and you can specify that for basically for all activities and uh, when, when saving content, uh, it will go to the roots of the document tasks and check if the flag is there, then the activity will have the option to save the content, then it will go one up, uh, and it will save the, the state for all of them un until an activity is reached where this flag isn't specified. Uh, that's just gone after the reboot. Um, of course, they had to invent something new to actually persist the state, and that's a persistable bundle. You can't really see it here, but it's written there. Um, document, documentation on that is, is, is a bit vague, and if you were to ask me, I would recommend not to use that, because I'm not sure if they, if they really intend to make, uh, make that known too much. Like I said, the documentation is not too good on that. Okay, um, I guess I uh, hurried a lot, so we get more time. Um, that's, that's already the end of my talk, a, a quick summary. Um, I like the storage access framework a lot. Um, I also implemented a documents provider. Uh, that's why I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, it's uh, quite a bit of work. But on the client side, uh, I, th I think it's very nice because it, it gives the, the users a lot of uh, new and nice options. Sadly, um, it's, it's a KitKat uh, and above uh, thing only. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no compact library that you know does something sensible on on Android 4 before KitKat, um, and the the cloud providers don't support all of it. So the open documentary is a really cool thing. Uh, I like it, but again, nobody supports it. So um, the the new document centric overview screen is kind of a nice thing. I guess most of you don't need the 
the multiple entries like Chrome because that's just overkill or you don't have, you know, even if you have an image viewer, you don't switch between five images because they are so awesome. You just watch them one after another. So uh, one entry is plenty, but if you launch um, external activities, uh, you might specify, uh, might want to specify that flag because um, users probably want to go back to your app and then at some later point go back to the content they opened. Um, uh, so that, that wasn't really possible before. You could do launch the external activity with new task and then a new task would be created for that one. But uh, again, switching back and forth is difficult because there's only one entry for the, the app of the external activity. So there's a good chance you, you couldn't go back to, to the content. Um, yeah, so um, please make, make use of the small features. It's, it's not an all or nothing, nothing thing. Just sprinkle the new document flags here and there. And uh, I'm sure your users will be very grateful uh, if your app is nicer to use. Also, storage access framework, like I said, uh, I, as a user of my phone, I really like the, the new dialogue and the functionality it brings. So uh, that's it from me. Thank you.